Howdy folks. So today I thought I'd show you how I do um, isolation whenever I do some sort of experiment um, which may or may not uh, involve uh, dangerous things with the mains. Now as you should all know um, isolating uh, from the mains is very uh, very good uh, thing to do for safety as well as for your house's wiring. So uh, I use these um, and I co this cost me basically nothing to set this up. Um, one of the places that I worked, this these were in a uh, effectively a, a dumpster. Uh, these were isolation transformers. They're really heavy. Um, but uh, this is just some standard isolation transformer from uh, Chicago Standard Transformer Corporation. Um, it says 60 cycles on it. So these are um, most certainly um, 1960s or earlier era. Um, they're rated for 250 watts, but the interesting thing is they are not um, one to one transformers, which is what you'd want for an isolation setup. Unfortunately, these are actually variable voltage um, and they're not one to one. Uh, you can see here the primary is 210, 230, or 250. There's a switch on the other side, and the secondary is 115. So these are not uh, not one to one, which is a problem because, of course, I really need one to one if I'm doing any anything uh, um, any kind of experiments. Now, of course, I could just use a variac to make it such that um, the input is one of those voltages and it'll step it down for me. But I had this setup going long before I had my variac, and I'll just make a note here that if you have a variac, um, that is not good enough. Um, variacs are auto transformers, which means they are not isolation transformers, and they are connected through. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you'd know that. But uh, yeah, variacs will not isolate you. Um, they are an auto transformer. So oh, very heavy. So on the back we just have a switch um, that allows us to switch between the three. Now when I got these, these were decrepit. Um, the cables, these were actually part of some sort of. Uh, power supply or something, and all the cables coming out of them were, were all the ice, all the insulation was pretty much crispy as all get out. Um, so I replaced it all um, with some other with some cords. And the thing is, there are two of them, and they're not actually the same transformer, um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the model number P dash six three eight five that's the same on both of these. Uh, they're rated the same and they have the same voltages, but the uh, voltage selector on this side is different than the voltage selector on this transformer. Uh, this one's got a little uh, chicken head knob on it, and this one's got one uh, with a little window on it that you can select between the different voltages, and there's a little screw you can use to set it uh, and fix it. So I thought that was a little interesting, but uh, they're basically the same transformer. So what I decided to do was uh, run these things back to back. So if you have uh, 115 going into the secondary, that doubles or so to let's say 210 on the uh, primary of one transformer, so you wire that one backwards, and then the primary of that is connected to the primary of the other one, which then steps it back down, and you get a one-to-one -one ratio out of the two transformers. So that's exactly uh, what I've done here. So I've got a just a standard uh, grounded plug coming in, um, there's 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 no joint joints under this electrical tape. It's just so that the cord doesn't keep fraying. Um, uh, we've got uh, everything's heat shrunk and, and nice under here. Um, we've got uh, ground which goes to the uh, the casing here, and uh, the mains comes in through this plug here because, like I said, this is going into what was the secondary. So um, I've just had to saw that plug off. And we have both pins here. And one advantage of doing this is because this is a non-polarized plug, um, you can insert this both ways. So you can uh, effectively reverse live and neutral on your device under test, um, which can be useful at, at times. Generally not because the device under test uh, may or may not be grounded. You can d decide whether you want to ground it or not. So that may or may not make a difference. Uh, but if it's if it's completely floating and it's not grounded, then live and neutral don't matter. But um, I know someone's going to probably correct me on that, uh, but generally speaking, it wouldn't matter. So then we've got, uh, just coming out of this, we've just got uh, a standard cable. 
um, which goes into the other one. So the uh, the ground is connected. So the the two transformer uh, cases are grounded to each other, as well as uh, mains earth referenced here um, for safety. And then we've just got a uh, again a non polarized uh, output on this side, which you can uh, you can connect things that are supposed to be grounded by using one of those super dangerous and probably discontinued um, adapters uh, that allow you to uh, plug in uh, something you know with three prongs into a two prong outlet and then you're you know they have the ground tab that you're supposed to ground but nobody ever did so um, you can you can isolate pretty much anything you want with these so sometimes I'll use these with a variac um, before I had my variac this was actually how I did um, small voltage changes so I could I could set the um, the primary windings on these uh, to different ratios. So if you set the input to 210 and the output to uh, to 250, for example, you could get a different uh, voltage range. You could step up or step down the voltage slightly. But I mean, when you look at the ratios, it's not very much. You could get maybe between because uh, I'm in Canada, so it's 120 volt nominal. It's somewhere between you know 100 and 150 volts or so. Um, you know, depending on what the mains decides to be that day, but because uh, we have, I have really, really uh, non, uh, very not consistent mains here, uh, it fluctuates all the way from like 110 to 120 uh, all the time. So that's 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 how I do it. I mean, it, it cost me nothing for these transformers. Um, you can pull things like this out of old gear, um, and the reason that you'd want to use these. Um, generally is of course you, you know you're not connected directly to the house wiring and the thing is the transformer the transformer will blow before the mains wiring does um, of course you're gonna have a circuit breaker all that kind of stuff but um, it's it's a lot safer to, to do this stuff with isolation transformers uh, so I'll use these whenever possible only if I'm gonna be pulling a lot more current um, than what's allowed by these because like I said they're 250 watt rated and you can overload them for a short period of time but not very long uh, of course, because then you risk burning out the windings inside. So if I'm going to be drawing, uh, you know, five, ten amps or something, then I'll just buy. Then I just I'll just use the Variac directly, and you just have to be a bit more careful that uh, you know you can uh, you can hurt yourself uh, because uh, mains is effectively Earth reference. I mean, the neutral is supposed to be Earth reference somewhere, um, and. Uh, you know, all it takes is you to touch what was live, and uh, now you're going to complete the circuit. So with an isolation transformer, it reduces the uh, the likelihood that's going to happen. So uh, I use these whenever possible. But uh, yeah, this is this is this is the stuff that's off camera that I usually don't show on those setups, um, as well as my Variac, uh, which I'll I'll show you at some point. It's actually a nice Variac I got. It was very cheap. It was I think 80 bucks for a 12 amp Variac uh, shipped to me, um, which is kind of amazing. It's not a name brand Variac or anything, but uh, Anyway, so that's how I do isolation. Um, it may be scary to some, but uh, I think it's better than nothing. So uh, anyway, now you know. Thanks for watching.